if they know what they're playing, if they know what each other's playing as well, I would assume the Guardi player would choose second as well. But why best of one? It's just their format. All right, here we go. Level ball going fast. They're going hella fast, bro. They're like moving. <clears throat> Counting some pokes. They, only, they didn't prize any rolls. I guess they'll go for the. They didn't prize a curlier though. So Marsh steps a little bit weaker. Marsh steps a little bit, a little bit weaker here. A little bit weaker. When is Guardi playing three games? You can play three games against me. You appreciate the eleven months that killer game. All right, here we go. Rolts. Yeah, the Guardian player's moving fast, bro. He's got to get to work after this, bro. He's in his suit ready to go. He's like... <laughs> He's like, all right, let's get the tournament moving, bro. I got to get to work after this. Parking cars, bro. He's a valet. <laughs> yeah, he's got a valet in between in between rounds. He's a he's a valet, bro. All right, here we go. VIP. There it is. Every time. Dude. <laughs> that reminds me. I played against someone at San Antonio. Um dude. <laughs> I used Mew. Like I I got Mew. Retreated to Mew. Mew. Got the battle VIP pass. And my opponent's like, of course. Or they said like every time or something. I was like, well, I'm, and, I, and I just said, well, the odds are pretty high. And they were like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> like if you don't open a battle VIP pass, you don't prize a battle VIP pass. You have a pretty high chance of hitting battle VIP pass off your Mew. Like the odds are pretty high. I was like, the odds are pretty high. And they're like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, it's pretty important though. Like it was one of those hands where it's like, if I, don't, if I don't get battle VIP pass, I'm in a pretty bad spot. But we got there, so. <clears throat> Are people under 18 allowed to play Masters? Yes. I don't know if there's multiple. I think there is multiple divisions in Japan, though. Is there actually? I don't actually know. Or do they just get split into multiple divisions when they come to Worlds? <clears throat> yeah, so the two fusion prize. That could, I mean, the two fusion being prized in this matchup doesn't hurt as much, I feel like. Because you're trying to get off a turn one attack, which you can do with two fusion or fusion plus double turbo. Um... Attaching a bench roll is a bit risky against me because it can get ice skewed. Oh, true. It could get skewed. That's actually that is actually a a big deal, Jake. Yeah, because they could skew it and then they can't mirage step. There's the ice skew as well. Yeah, they should have attached to the Mew for sure. Definitely a mistake there from the from the from the Guardi player. Definitely a mistake. Now they probably don't want to mirage step. I mean, they might not want to mirage step next turn, but. That'd be pretty good. They also had level ball in hand. They could have gotten Manaphy as well. Manaphy wasn't prized, I don't think. They could have got Manaphy to protect the bench. Um, step against me is always worth it. Yeah, you can kind of take the turn off. That's true. So you don't really care. Yeah, level ball for Manaphy was honestly the play. And then maybe you attach to the bench. Um, Ultra Ball Hawaii double boss. That's fine, though. They probably play the pal pad. They are just going to fail. They still need to get there, of course, as well, but it's, like, not that hard. I guess, to be honest, though, you can't double turbo the ice cube. It has to be double fusion with with two fusions prized. Dude, I hate these full art Mews and Genesex because they look the same. I never, like, I can't tell, well, I have to, like, look harder to tell how, which, how many Mews and how many Genesex are on the board. Like, I have to actually double check. There's Town Store. That's pretty good. I guess the four Seal Stone. Tool Jammer. Okay. The Tool Jammer is interesting. There's the Sparkle. So they basically have it at this point. They only tap the Ice Q. Okay. Mew as well. They know they're only getting one Fusion Energy here. They check their prize cards. They're like, well, I'm just going to just Ice Q, I guess. Although you would maybe just put one in play anyways because you want to just raw draw into the other one. And they should use Town Store while they're in here. Just get a Force Heal Stone. Um, I assume that's where they're going next. Yep. Town Store. Go ahead. Probably grab a force. I can't imagine not grabbing a force. Unless, I mean, I don't even know what else you'd get. I guess if you had a force in hand, you could grab something else. But, yeah, I don't even know what else you'd get. I guess you could but grab your box of disasters right now, I guess. Um, Man, if you preemptive bench is only good if you know you're playing first fusion. Um, not, I mean, in best of one, you have to take, like, different precautions, though. Because you don't have, like, follow-up games to lose. You can't afford to lose to fusion 
because you didn't bench Manaphy. And the, you have the bench space to work with anyway. So the preemptive Manaphy bench is like pretty reasonable if they open. If you, and you know they're playing Mew off the rip anyways. There's the pal pad. The bosses are back. I, was like one, I guess that's like one thing about best of one versus best two out of three is you definitely approach it a little bit differently in terms of how you play. Like in best two out of three, I probably wouldn't bench Manaphy. But in best of one, I would definitely consider it. Also, you maybe just know that the Guardi the Mew player is playing Fusion as well here as the Guardi player. Um just because of who else was at the top tables near you. Like you maybe just know they're playing Fusion Mew. So you can just like play around it. There's the Ice Q. At the very least the Ice Q was always getting a prize card here, but now you can specifically take out take out the Ralts, and now Mirage Step is not possible. So for the Guardi player now yeah, yeah, I don't even know. I mean, if you get Candy Guardian, maybe you're going more aggressive. Maybe you just go for a more aggressive route now. Maybe you just go more aggressive here. Candy Guardian step. Chill. Candy Guardian kill this Ice Q. We'll see what they choose to go with, though. The step is unli very unlikely at this point. And with no step, to be honest, I think KO and Ice Q here is probably pretty reasonable. You could knock it out with, like, if you could theoretically knock it out with Cresselia. We need to do 110, 6. Uh, I guess you don't want to spread your psychics that thin. I guess you could, no, you could knock it out with Cresselia with triple psychic, I guess. Or just scream tail, it's fine. Yeah. One of those. Guardi X, counter catcher KO the Genesect. That's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit risky, I guess. Then the Melowetta can come down plus two more fusions. You don't know where the fusions are. All right, there we go. Fog. Fog for probably another Ralts. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, definitely some some misplays on that. Or some poor choices, I think, on the first turn from the Guardi player. They should have attached to the Mew for sure. And then had the level ball. So they could have got the Manaphy. I don't know if they 100% should have got the Manaphy. But they could have got the Manaphy. Um, they could have got the Manaphy and put that down on the bench. But they chose not to. Not sure about that. Um... Not sure about that. Like, getting the Manaphy, like I said, I don't know if it's 100% sure that you want to do that, but obviously would have been good. Might be a little bit too too hindsight, but it would have been good. Uh, hi, I'm quite new to Pokemon. I played Yu-Gi-Oh! in the past. I'm wondering if the OCG and TCG are two separate formats. I have no idea what OCG is. But it's smart to keep an eye on the OCG to inform for upcoming strategies. For any answers, I don't know. Maybe chat knows what OCG is. All right, we found Greninja, got our Curlia. Might need to go grab Manaphy here. There's the Artisan. I assume it's gonna go get Manaphy now, unless we have Candy Guardian in hand to go attack. But no, we're just protecting the bench. Only one Curlia though, but we have an Ultra Ball, so I assume second Curlia is on the way here. We gotta go for second Curlia here. We need to draw some cards. We actually need to set up our Curlius to get to our Guardies. So Boss KO Curly is going to be the play here from Mew. What is even the line that Mew wants to take here? <clears throat> Do you want to go Boss KO with a Mew or Boss KO with the Ice Q? If you Boss KO with Ice Q, Ice Q dies. A little bit harder for Mew to die. Ice Q could die to Scream Tail anyways, though, I guess. Um... I'm actually not sure. There's like no potential for another one prize attacker on the Mew side. Because there's two fusions prized. That looks like a box of disaster. I actually can't tell though. I think it is though. Yeah, do you ever want to retreat? Um, you can die to reversal. Yeah, so you probably do want to attack with Mew, right? That's what I was thinking too. And you do have the box now as well. So you want to be as aggressive as possible before the box gets vacuumed. Unless you're going to psychic leap the Mew, I guess. I got heads, so yeah. I mean, boss KO, like I said, boss KO Curlia. I guess you don't want to retreat of fusion energy, so if you have like a switch, you'd rather do that probably. Keep the fusions on the ice queue. Oh, the one with the Avery is that better? That is better, right? Oh, that's dude, the Avery is sick here. Oh, it does, it doesn't do quite the same thing. You remo remove removing a Ralts and a Greninja. Is as good as boss KO Curlia for sure, though. A and the KO on the active. Yeah, the Avery's definitely better than boss. Avery's definitely better than... You don't get a Curlia KO, though. You don't get a Curlia KO. So that's kind of like... You want a KO, you want Curlia's to die, but 
with how many rare candy are left, our Ralts is effectively a guardy probably at this point, so it's pretty good here. Now imagine if they had the big suck here. That'd be pretty insane, yeah. Yeah, imagine the, the prime catcher right here, broken. There's a double turbo. So yeah, I think attacking with Mew here, I still like that I think attacking with Mew here. Because Ice Q is like pretty fragile. Ice Q just dies. I don't think we want Ice Q to just die. Ooh, okay, but another interesting thing I guess is there's two Mew VMAXs in play, and there's no possibility for Psychic Leap. So he does go with the Ice Q attack. Like I said, I kind of like the Mew VMAX attack a little bit more there, I feel like, before a potential vacuum is found or something. All right, here comes the Super Rod. What do you get, though? I think you get... Yeah, I think I like Ralts, Ralts, Greninja. Wait, did they even play the Super Rod? It must be under the Mew. Is it? Yeah, it's right there. Mew's still nice, though, but it's not nice this turn. So getting Mew back is... Eh, probably pretty bad. <clears throat> Miss Switch and they want to get a fusion. Yeah, that's like reasonable. There's counter catcher on the Genesec with the forest. There's the research. The problem with this play though. Well, I guess they could be going for the Screamtail knockout, to be honest. They could be going for the Screamtail KO here, actually. They immediately used Artisan for not Screamtail, though. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like they maybe should have saved it. They get a level ball there. Um I have to I have to imagine that's their play here is is Screamtail the Ice Cube, but Let's see, they're still thinking. Here comes the Ultra Ball. They got the level ball for the Screamtail. They could KO the Genesect as well. Well, I guess that'd maybe be what you want to do, right? Like if the thing has the four seal stone anyways, are we just KOing it with Guardi X anyways, actually? The more that I think about it, I guess that's kinda of just the play, right? Oh, but they're going for Shiny Arcana. Okay, hold up. They do have another Ultra Ball in hand, though, I think. I think they have another Ultra Ball. Maybe they're just going to go for the 2 2 2. I guess they just win off 2 2 2, to be honest. They do just win by going 2 2 2. They could just 2 2 2 prize race here. Yeah, I guess that is their plan. Just go 2 2 2. <laughs> they could just 2 2 2. Here comes second Ultra Ball. Another Iona biting the dust. They also, I think they have second counter catcher in hand as well, so they'd have to go counter catcher and then boss on the next turn. But there's like nothing left in their deck. They've like, it's 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 pretty likely to do the two 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 here. I think. There's the guard ex. They are gonna be really low on draw power on this next turn though. The draw power is gonna be like none. Honestly, a judge or a, uh, yeah, a judge or an Iona would hit pretty hard here from the guardy player or from the uh the Mew player. It is still a four card hand difference, but. It went from like a 10 card hand to a 4 card hand. So you know they're keeping the goods. There's 6. Here comes the knockout. There we go. And now they probably want to attack with Ice Q to like force the one prizer on them. Well, does that make too much of a difference? I guess you could still just attack with... Uh, uh, You could just attack with a Mew here still with the box, right? Because the box triggers, you just win with the quad tablet. Yeah. I mean, it feels pretty good for Mew at this point, to be honest. No Psychic Leap option now. But honestly, at this point, you're probably too far ahead for it to matter. No Meloetta option either, though. But I guess you do know that you still have two Fusions prize, so... Um. There's an Ultra Ball. Like I said, Judge, Judge Ariano feels really good here. I guess it's a six card hand after the two prize cards as well. Um, you has a tablet prize also. They have a tablet prize. So they can't get the one K on the guard EX yet then either. They need to find that tablet. Or they need to find the tablet. Well, yeah, they know they have two fusions prize. That's so awkward. Because <clears throat> they can't go like double fusion to the Meloetta or double fusion to the Mew to copy Mew or Meloetta's attack. There's a path. The rest of the hand kind of looks like it sucks. It might just be path knockout, which the guardy that that's what the guardy player wants to see here. To be honest, I mean they don't love the idea of path, but they got ways around path. Maybe a switch in hand. Oh, it's just path KO. That's like not good. The mu player definitely wants you want the hand disrupt this turn for sure. Definitely want to see the hand disruption here. Honestly, he's looking okay for guardy now. Guardi needs to find some Curlias, though. We need some draw power on board. But now Guardi's going to go... Guardi's going to go knockout with Guardi EX. 
on a Genesect into Knockout with Guardi EX on a Genesect. So we counter catch this turn, then we boss next turn. And the boss isn't prize, so it's in the deck. There's a Curly in hand now, I think, off the prize cards as well. So it's looking pretty good for Guardi, to be honest. I'm liking I'm liking Guardi's chances here. Do we, need, we do have the counter catcher. We just need to find the the state of removal now. There's a Curlia. Counter Iono. You could attach as well to the... Oh, they're going to draw first with Curlia? Interesting. See, the weird thing with... Is that correct? Because the weird thing with that is what if you draw into the boss? Now you're going to Iono to the bottom of the deck? Well, I guess you can draw here and maybe not Iono if you find a stadium bump. That's so weird to me that you would Curlia first there. Because what if you draw into a card you want next turn, and if you're going to Iono this turn to try and find the stadium, that just seems backwards. That seems backwards to play it like that. There's the counter catcher. There's the Iono. See, I don't, that makes like no sense to me. That makes no sense. I don't know why they did that. Also, putting the energy on the bottom of the deck. Um, he knows his hand sucks, so wouldn't he want a boss rather than Iono? No, because you need the Iono. You need the boss for the next turn because you're about to be ahead on the prize cards. <clears throat> and then the Mew player could take a one prize knockout instead of a two prize knockout, so they don't give you counter catcher again, and then you can't gust a two prize and you have to KO through the Mew. Also, leaving the psychic energy in the deck isn't a bad thing. Um, leave the psychic energy in the deck isn't a bad thing because, um, then it becomes an out for Greninja to draw more cards as well. Yeah, I don't, I really don't like that, that choice of using the Curly there. I don't like that. All right, well, they whiffed that stadium bump, so now we have to see if Mew, Mew doesn't have a four seal stone established. Do they have a way to move this Genesect? They're in a good spot if they can just take a, a knockout this turn. They just need to KO something. Um, honestly, if you just move the Genesect, you're in a good spot because it takes away the Guardi's line of... I guess the Guardi player then has to try and take the knockout with the Shiny Arcana. But boss KO on Shiny Arcana is pretty good here. KO the active Guard Vorex is probably best. Uh, not taking a knockout is not great. That's the only thing you want to not do here as Guard Vor is not take a KO. We're trying to avoid not knocking out. Well, but there it is. No KO. That's not good. So now Guardi can one-hit KO the Mew EX in the active... Mew VMAX in the active with the Shiny Arcana. There's the second reversal. <laughs> uh, so you can 1-KO the active and then Cresselia, or you can't Cresselia, you could Screamtail or Boss KO Ice Cube for the win. But Iono plus Path to 1 is like a, a possibility on the Mew side. So you gotta build up your draw power and play here as the as the Gardevoir player. So you wanna get back Ralts, Curlia, uh, Ralts, Curlia, Shiny Arcana. Just build up your draw power. That's the goal here. You're gonna be in a pretty good spot. Oh, wait, there's the Box of Disaster on the act. Wait, does Second Reversal get around Box of Disaster? No, you still get KO'd. So you have to hit one off of Shiny Arcana to get around it? Oh, I guess that's actually... I didn't even realize that. I didn't realize the box was there. Huh. How does that change up how you should play this then? How should this be... How should this be adjusted now then? Uh, I forgot about the box. Well, I don't, the Guardian player could still have Vacuum left. We've only seen a, a, an Artisan from them, I think. Gives up the Greninja. Oh my gosh, are they about to deck out? The chat warned them. Ooh, they, yeah, the Box of Disasters, that's going to be tough to deal with. They could have maybe shuffled back Psychic Energy and tried to Shiny Arcana into one, to be honest. They got the Collapse, but... If they play the Collapse, you could discard the Ice Cube, I guess. I don't know how much that would actually affect the late game, but it could do something, I guess. Yeah, this is actually awkward. They could have actually discarded this Guardi EX with this Collapse if they had built up energy on it before, like Jake was mentioning. Collapse damage Guardi. No, because you can't move that. You can't move the guardian until you play the collapsed. They're taking Screamtail. Could Screamtail first and Screamtail the Ice Q, I guess. But then, if your Shiny Arcana Guard War gets KO'd, do you just lose? I guess you still have Zation, right? Now, now we're going. We're not going to KO the active, right? Yeah, we have to go. Now we have to go Screamtail knockout Ice Q here. Um... Crest Ice Q? Crest doesn't work. Our Ice Q has 110 HP. So you can't Crest it. They just have to top the prizes. 
So I guess, I guess the play here is hope you pull the Zacian off the prize cards here. But that's like seems like such a... Well, no, no, no. You could... Okay, actually, no, no, no. You can use Shiny Arcana to KO the bench Mew VMAX on the next turn. But the play here from the Mew player... The play here from the Mew player could be to Psychic Leap. The play here from the Mew player could be to Psychic Leap with the benched Mew VMAX into the... Well, no, yeah, into the... The, the little, what it's called, Scream Tail. Or you could go for the boss KO on the Shiny Arcana and hope they don't have Zacian. But I feel like that's not great. I feel like Psychic Leap the Scream Tail with Bench Mew. No, 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 because you don't win. Yeah, no, then you lose, actually. No, that doesn't work because you're still worth three prize cards. So the play is always like boss KO. Uh, is the play always boss KO Shiny Arcana? I think the play is always boss KO Shiny Arcana, right? As long as you have two boss left, a boss KO Shiny Arcana and then boss KO uh, EX. And they should they have only four minutes left, but that should be plenty of time. We should have plenty of time here. Boss Leap Arcana would be interesting too. I don't know if that works, just to damage it. Probably not. Oh, they're tied on prize cards here though. That would be interesting. They are tied on prize cards, so the reversals aren't active now. Yeah, does that ever work though? It could, right? Because you could Psychic Leap both Mew VMAXs out of play, theoretically. You could boss Psychic Leap Arcana into boss Psychic Leap for Knockout. Oh, but then the Screamtail... Dude, that's hard. <laughs> that hurts my head to think about. I think it just has to be boss KO Arcana. But you have to have two boss left, though. Because you have to boss KO Arcana and then boss KO Guardi EX. They're just going after the Guardi EX! No, no, wait. I guess this, tie, this guarantees a tie, right? Not really, though, because you're benched Mew... No, I don't like this play. I don't like this play. You just lose to boss. This play just loses to boss. Wait, can they Psychic Leap it and trap it in the active? Oh, wait, they can maybe Psychic Leap and trap it. How much damage is on that Guardi? That would be sick. Because they're about to deck out. They're out of super odds. What was it? 150... They need like a bunch of tablets. They could like Psychic Leap trap this Guardi. Oh no, wait, can they Max Miracle trap it? No, don't kill it. Oh, that's game, bro. You can't kill it there. You have to trap it. If you trap it, you win. You got the stadium, so if Arcana lives, he should win. Yeah. I feel like you could have trapped the Guardi EX there. He did, they did get the stadium, but I think they were out of energy. I think they were just literally out of everything. Yeah. I think the Mew player could have just punched the Guardi. Uh, I think the, if the Mew player had just gone Max Miracle plus a tablet or two, you could have trapped the Guardi EX in the active because uh, you wouldn't have been able to retreat it. And then you just let them deck out because they had the stadium, but I think they were out of energy. They had the stadium, but I think they're out of energy there. So they couldn't actually heal with the stadium. Maybe they did have it, though. I don't know. All right. Got the four four energy prize and collapse prize. Four energy prize doesn't matter that much unless Cresselia becomes, like, their main go-to attacker. So that's kind of the question is, like, Cresselia is going to be, like, a little bit limited for uh, the Guardi player on the right here. And then on the left, they prize the Shiny Arcana, which is kind of annoying, but I guess that's kind of it. And the player on the left. A and the Manaphy start. It's, Manaphy start's not as bad as it was. Because it does stop Screamtail, I guess. But And it does depend if there even is a Cresselia on the other deck. Or if it's just going to be Screamtail. Because then the Manaphy's like pretty chill, to be honest. Alright, here we go. Doing some prize check-in. I can't tell if there's a Cresselia in there or not. I definitely saw a Screamtail. But, like I said, they got the Manaphy. Now the question is going to be, are they going to go for the step here? They probably should play for the step here. We'll see, though. Can't imagine we wouldn't play for step here, but we'll see. Maybe they want to go for the turn two candy guardy. If they, have, if they have that available, maybe that is correct. Just be aggressive, draw the first prize card. Especially when like your opponent, if your opponent's gonna match your step, and then you just go candy guardy knockout, and then they step, you get to go up two prize cards. It's pretty good. So I would imagine uh, we could see a, a candy guardy angle here. We'll see though. Time doesn't start till they set up. Yeah, that's how stream matches work. Even like not even in Japan, but like everywhere. When the players start the game, when the first person draws their card for turn, that's basically when the timer starts on stream matches. Because your your time is separate from the general player base. 
because you have to get the players, get them on stage, get them set up, set up around the prize cam. So the stream matches usually start after the general round starts. So you're on a separate timer. Okay. A lot of rolls, a lot of rolls. Would have been more reasonable to go for a Greninja if we were looking for a step angle. I think Greninja was in the deck as well. There's an energy in hand at the very least, I think. Obviously, that'd be attached to active, I would imagine. And there's the pass. All right, so step or candy guard is still both available. A lot of fog crystals in the hand here. The player on the right, I think I've actually seen before. Oh, you guys can't even see what the player on the left looks like because I'm blocking their uh, their camera. Um, the player on the right looks familiar, though. I think I've seen them before. In uh, Maybe they were one of the Elite Four players? I don't remember. Um, if not, we've maybe seen them in uh, Champions League before. That's Kato Icy. I don't recognize the name, that's for sure. I definitely don't recognize the name, but they look familiar. You can move your cam down a little and cover a bit of the chat so that we could see the player on the left. I could, but I'm not going to. I definitely could, but it's not going to happen. You guys will never know who the player on the left is. You just have to deal with it. I guess unless they win, then you get the winner's interview with them. Greninja is risky to put into play early, can get Averyed. I don't know about, I don't think you care. I wouldn't say that's risky. Or I'm trying to try, so draw some cards and play the game. If my opponent wants to Avery me and make me discard my Greninja, they can, I'll discard my Greninja. What's that mean? I'd have to have like four Ralts in play plus Greninja. Are you saying use Greninja to recover after the Avery after you Mirage step? But even then, I think I'd rather have Ralts on my bench instead of a Greninja on my bench. Uh, Greninja is pretty chill. I also don't know how much Avery people are playing. Idea if you can avoid it. I see what you're saying, Jake. I see what you're saying. I think I'd rather have... Yeah. I don't even know how much Avery people are playing. I don't think the, the last Guardian we just saw, I don't think was playing Avery. I could be wrong on that. I don't think they had Avery, though. All right. Two more ults from the Fogs. They have Energy in hand. They got Candy in hand. They got Ultra Ball in hand. They got the Mirage Step option in hand. They honestly kind and they're they're playing heavily for Mirage Step here. So Candy Guardy here would be pretty good as a response to this heavy Mirage Step angle. Could even Cresselia a Rolt here as well, and like kind of force them into Mirage Step, and then you can just get ahead two prize cards. This is looking pretty good for the the Guardy on the left side here, to be honest. It's looking pretty good. I just look like yeah, if they have the Candy Guardy here, I I'd probably just start swinging on him. Yeah, ideally with a Cresselia, Cresselia one of the Rolts. I just step every time. No, I'm getting two prize cards ahead here. Yeah, especially if they play Cresselia. They are, they are stepping. Especially if they play Cresselia and uh, Screamtail. Then you just don't... You're never attacking with your guard wars to begin with anyways, right? Or like you have enough other attack... You could just sit there with Screamtail and just Screamtail over and over again. And if they're like hitting your curlies on your bench, you just super on back in the deck. They are going for the step though. I don't know. Getting two prize cards ahead seems pretty good. If they don't have candy in hand, I mean, it's possible. I don't know what they have in hand. I'm saying if they can go for it, I would go for it. But yeah, I mean, triple uh, triple curly off uh, the steps pretty good as well. Now, this is where you'd want to hit them with an Avery. Jeez, that's so rough. Is Avery's not, the Avery doesn't even seem that good here. If he had raw candy guardy. Oh yeah, that's what I meant. Like if he had, if, if he's got it in hand, sure, go candy guardy swing. But if otherwise, if, the, if you have this, if this is what you have in hand, then this is fine as well. Avery would be pretty good here, especially with the Ralts in the discard pile. That means there's no Ralts to replenish the board. The Mirage Step is in hand. The problem with this hand, though, is... Uh, the problem with this hand is there is no energy. Oh, do they have Candy Shiny Arcot? Dude, this play is so gross. I hate that this, that people draw into this play. Or you get Candy Guardy Mirage Step. It's just disgusting. Should we get the Mirage set for three? But I'm pretty sure they prize the Curlia. I'm pretty sure they prize the Curlia, so. They have it. What the heck, bro? It's so gross. Like, just take your Mirage set for three. But you also have the Candy Shiny Arcana. Disgusting. Shiny Arcana, Shiny Arcana before the Iono as well. I guess that makes sense, though, because if you draw into Curlia, you want to put them back on the bottom of the deck. So hoping to not draw into that last Curlia. Like I said, I'm pretty sure there's one Curlia prize here for the player on the right. 
Uh, and did just put one to the bottom of the deck, but could draw into the other one. They, they didn't draw it, though. Chilling. No Ralts, though, either. I think you'd want a Ralts here as well. Be able to utilize rare candies. No Ralts, though. Two refinement on the way, unfortunately. Maybe I, mis maybe I misremembered the prize cards, though. I don't think I did, though. Oh, I did. What the heck? Was it last game? Maybe it was last game, actually. Yeah. All right. We got refinement for three versus refinement for three. Let's see how this one goes. Now we're looking for that Avery on the other side. Also, the big question is, does either player play Avery? That's a big thing. Does either player even play Avery? I think a lot of people have been cutting the Averys. Um, I appreciate the three months there, Fluffiest. Yeah, a lot of people have been cutting the, the Averys. At least in uh, at San Antonio, there wasn't that much Avery in the Guardies. I wonder if, uh, if they're doing the same thing over here in Japan. But Guardies seems to be like ridiculously popular over here, so... All right, here we go. Can we find an Avery? They can't. Also, they did bench the extra Ralts, to be honest. I don't know if they should have done that because now they can't Scream Tail. I think it's probably a mistake on the Guardi's. Or the Guardi on the left probably should not have benched Ralts to have the option of Cresselia or Scream Tail. I actually think that's a misplay. Because you probably weren't getting Candy Guardied on and one of your things getting knocked out anyways. So yeah, I definitely think that was a misplay, actually, the more that I'm thinking about it. Is that the EX? I can't tell. We don't have that artwork, do we? I haven't seen that yet. Would you even use Shredder Arcana before Mirage Step in case you draw into Double Curlia? Well, they use Mirage Step before they use... They use Shredder Arcana before they use Mirage Step. Before they use Iono, so they could Iono them back to the bottom of the deck. But I guess if you weren't going to Iono, it depends. It depends on what your hand is. Deck with the X here is pretty good. Yeah, it seems chill. Right, but what, if they knock it out, you're in trouble. I don't know. I kind of don't want to attack with my EX here. How many Tucker are in the discard pile, though? Is they have enough? It'd be two after the KO. So they would need reversal plus, what, four? Um, well, no, you're going to damage yourself at least to 290, right? Ooh, I don't know about this. I've, I'm, you're getting knocked out here. I'm not, I'm not whiffing the knockout here. Oh, they did prize four psychics, though. So, I mean, the player on the left doesn't know about the four psychics prize, but... There is four psychic surprised. <laughs> so you need like you need five of your six psychics. They got Greninja, so another way to discard and draw. They have a research in hand as well. They can actually just like draw a ton of cards here. You probably don't bench the Greninja. Uh, kind of want to bench a Ralts, I think, here and go for the KO. Maybe you keep the bench space open and, and if you whiff the knockout, you just go for a Screamtail or a Cresselia. Yeah, you maybe should just keep the bench space open and not bench Ralts until after the research, to be honest. Just don't bench Greninja. Keep the option open. The level ball is happening here, though. Oh, you could thin out the Jirachi. Okay. And play for the knockout. Going back in with the Ultra Ball. You kind of want to use a Curlia first, though, so you can evolve it. Evolve to the Guardi EX here, though. I didn't see a Screamtail in there, either. Do they even play Screamtail or Cresselia? Is it just Guardi? It's Guardy Guardy. It, it, honestly, it might be Guardy Guardy. That's it. Well, only Guardy. Just Guardy. All right, here we go. Energy. They got the Guardy EX. So they can use Ultra Ball to thin again if there's any dead cards in there. No way, it's Guardy Guardy. It could be. That's it. You attack with Guardy or Guardy. There's some weird stuff in there. Right, there's a Zacian. Okay, they got Zacian. They gotta have Screamtail or Cresselia, right? I'm pretty sure they don't play Cresselia. I'm pretty sure it's just Screamtail. I think I saw the I think I saw the alternate alternate art or whatever artwork rare. Oh, they're even gonna thin out the Zation. Interesting. Not gonna save it. I don't know if I like that. I like kind of saving Zation for the late game. If you're attacking with Guardies early yourself, you're gonna want your super rods to recover Guardy pieces. So you wanna save your Zation for the late game. Um Oh, thinking about benching the Ralts. So now it's locked out of Screamtail. So if they don't get the pieces to one hit Kaylor's Guardi X, they're just not taking a knockout this turn. Oh, I guess they could get Countercatcher, but that's like not a great line, I don't feel like. Couple energy. Still can draw six more cards. Station discard is fine because you can shuffle it back into a low deck at the end. Yeah, but if you like want to use your super rods more, I don't like it because like sometimes you just want to use your super rods more aggressively. And like recover. Um they're close here. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to recover the Zation. I want to recover other stuff. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. They have the counter catcher here now, so they could possibly pull off the counter catcher line. 
Here they again. There's another Psychic. They are literally just the reversal away. They're not going to play the Falkers Little Thin first, though. I think there maybe was a Ralts in the deck. There might have been nothing, though. And there's the Whiff. Right? Oh, I thought that Red Candy was one for a second. They, they, almost, they were just the reversal short. Oh, wait. We're not done yet. Hold up. Oh, still whiffed? See, this is why I didn't really love that Ralts bench. I think you should have tried to figure that out after you played Research. Because you'd love to Scream Tail here now. Attacking with a Shiny Arcana into a Guardi X is terrible. I guess, yeah. So attacking with Shiny Arcana in general here is just terrible. You do have the Counter Catcher, which is you're going to use here, I'm sure. I don't think we're going to... Oh, they're both on the bottom. And the Ralts was in the deck. They didn't thin out the Ralts with the Fog Crystal like they should have. So, on it, well, I'm punished for the missequence. Could go EX into EX. You could. They don't have space for Cresselia or Screamtail. EX into EX is actually might be pretty chill here, to be honest, actually. I'm kind of down with EX into EX. It's either EX into EX or Counter Catcher KO Curlia. Both do not feel great. They're go Maybe they're going to just punch active hard. No, it's going to be the Counter Catcher. Okay. They just want to overload just in case their own Guardi gets KO'd back, I guess. So going for the overload? Sure, sure. I'm sure this... Uh, I'm sure this Guard War is getting KO'd here. Yeah, they probably should have played... Well, keeping Fall Crystals around for late game is chill, I guess, as well. But if they're going all in to the point where they're like searching out the Zacian and discarding the Zacian, I feel like you're all in at that point to the point where you should play the Fall Crystal. Um, you should probably play the Fall Crystal to thin out the Rolts there as well, right? If you're fully going in like that. Kind of feels weird to like Ultra Ball for Zacian, discard Zacian with research and then not play Fall Crystal to get Rolts when you have that to, uh, to thin out a little bit. Uh, thin out a little bit more as well. I don't know about that. That feels weird. <clears throat> but yeah, definitely would have rather used uh, Screamtail here. Wait, actually, th there wasn't a Screamtail in the deck, though, was there? Dude, I don't think they play... I don't think they play Screamtail or Cresselia. I might be trolling, but I don't think I saw either of them in the deck. Or was it in there on the Fall Crystal at the end there? It might have been in there at the end. I don't think I don't remember seeing it to be honest. I thought I saw it when the when they searched out the Zacian, but after that I don't think I saw it. We'll see. Saw Screamtail? Okay. They have to play one of them at least, right? Not playing either of them would be unhinged. Well, honestly, you should just play Screamtail, and then it's like, alright, if you think Cresselia is worth playing, you should include it, I guess. But here comes the Cresselia on the other side. The KO of Shiny Arcana. Things are looking good for the the Guardian on the left here. I'm 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 liking what the Guardian on the left here is cooking. Shelly is about to happen. I don't like that they overbench their Rolts on the last turn too much, but yeah, I don't like the Rolts overbench on the on the turn one because then you could have attacked with Cresselia last turn instead of Guardi EX punch, which could have got punished by the reversal fine. But uh, Ko Curly here's a possibility too. You could go Ko Curly into Ko Guardi EX. You could. Okay, that's true. I guess the only thing I'm thinking about with the Ko on the Curly here is that then the Guardi player on the right can go reversal KO your Guardi EX, right? Because one candy is gone. Yeah, but it's just like super odd level ball away from having another Curly on the bench, right? One candy's gone. Yeah, but they probably play three candy, right? Most people play the three candy. I don't know. I guess I just kind of like the idea of KOing the Shiny Arcana. They do too. I just don't like all the energy just kind of chilling there, but... I guess the energy there just doesn't matter, right? Because they can just put on another Shiny Arcana. It's the same thing, right? Also, I guess it's the same thing no matter what, right? Yeah, maybe I'm just kind of tripping with that, actually. Because it's the same thing. You just push up another Shiny Arcana. I'm actually not sure how I feel about KO and Shiny Arcanas versus KO and Curly is. Honestly, Refinement is... uh, Refinement is better than... What's it called for the most part? Unless you're really trying to hit energy. Um, unless you're really trying to hit energy off of Shiny Arcana. Refinement's better because it thins out your deck. It's a tough call. Yeah, the more I think about it, I don't mind the Curly KO. Because I guess you have the potential... If you go for the Curly KO... The Curly KO, you have the potential to lock them out of Guardi EX, right? You can play for that play, but now you can't really play for that play. So, Or playing for that play makes less sense now. I kind of like it. I kind of like the Curly KO there, I guess. And you could, like, cheese KO that, that Shiny Arcana later, right? You could KO it with, like... I don't know. It had a lot of damage on it. You could KO it with, like, anything. You don't even, like, need to Guardi EX in, to, in play to KO it later. You could just KO it with literally anything later on. <clears throat> and, like, yeah, like I said, Refinement right here is probably more valuable than a... Shiny Arcana, because it thins out a card as well. Got double Super Rod in hand. Double Iono. They're not going to play that research then, for sure. 
They also have a reversal. If they put the reversal on the bench, though, it makes me think they're committed to K1 and Cresselia for turn, which is exactly what the player on the left wants, is Cresselia to go down instead of a uh, Curly going down. Once again, filling the bench with Ralts instead of trying to go for the, the Screamtail KO on Curly on the bench here. I don't, I don't know. I feel like you just want to get rid of these Curlias. Like, Cresselia getting KO'd here is exactly what the player on the left wants. They want to attack with Cresselia, get a prize card, Cresselia dies, perfect. Exactly what they want is that literal that literal line to happen. Because now you're, if you're trading Cresselias for shiny Arcanas, you're winning the game. Like that's that's your, that's what you want to have happen. So they could have got a, a Screamtail instead of instead of one of these Ralts, right? There's the overload again, which like I don't know, is probably correct. But now the, now this thing can get KO'd by literally this this Guardi shiny Arcana Guardi could get KO'd by a slap from a Curlia later. So you could once again just avoid this Guardi. Dude, I don't like that reversal attachment either, right? The reversal Guardi, the reversal Curlia always gets KO'd here, right? I don't like that. Yep, here comes Cresselia again, and Cresselia's gonna go up. Honestly, the the Guardi player should have probably pushed guard, pushed up Guardi EX to get those two energy off the Guardi EX, right? You should have sent up Guardi EX, accelerated an energy to it, retreat the two off. It has 20 damage on it. Cresselia KO Curlia. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh I don't like the Ralts push here. The Ralts push here feels weird. Guardiax is like not a good attacker at this point. Yeah, Guardiax is like not a good attacker at this point. It's like bad. You're behind. Yeah, you're behind. And yeah, the reversal attachment feels weird to be honest. Because the best thing to KO here is the Curlia. Honestly, the best thing to KO here is something that is a Shiny Arcana or could become a Shiny Arcana that has a reversal. And it happens to be a Curlia now on the bench with a reversal. But you could just attack with your Shiny Arcana and keep the reversal in the deck. Um... I don't know. We're cooking though. We'll see if they even find the. Uh... <laughs> we'll see if they even find the. There's a Cresselia. It is there. As long as they have the energy to work with, this is like okay. But they now they're gonna get like locked out of energy to use Cresselia again. But twenty extra damage on the Guardi X is not great. But there wouldn't be twenty damage, Jake, because it could healed with Cresselia. So the Guardi X has an energy on it right now, right? Oh, I might be trolling. Does Guardi X not have an energy on it? I thought it did. You need to accelerate, take 20, retreat 2. Uh, but if you miss Cress, just don't miss Cress. What the heck? We're not missing Cress out here. The damage shouldn't matter, though. If you have rever the reversals, the reversal is what's killing you at this point. So the damage really shouldn't matter. They're go oh, no. Okay, I don't like that. I think we should go after this Curlia for sure. Now they got the reversal play. Now they can actually go KO Guard EX here. Okay, I don't like that play at all. I think the Curlia definitely should have gone down there. We definitely should have got rid of Curlia there. I don't like this play. Now we look for a Guardi EX KO. I'm, I'm almost positive we're trying to go Guardi EX KO here. Or you could go sh you could go Screamtail. They just candied out the Shiny Arcana on the bench. Now they can't use the reversal on the active. I don't know about that. Well, now we can't use the reversal anyways. <laughs> well, never mind. I guess... Well, now we have to scream tail the shiny arcana off the bench. Or, yeah, we have to get rid of that three energy shiny arcana on the bench. We got to get rid of the three, three energy shiny arcana. I don't like the way they're playing. I don't like the way either player's playing this game, to be honest. I don't like this. Uh, they even, like, they even hesitated after they did it. I think they realized that they probably shouldn't have done that after they had done it. Um. Yeah. We got to get rid of that Shiny Arcana Guardi that has three energy because you can just go KO Guardi X next turn with that thing and then just win the game, like guaranteed. That thing's got to go down to a Screamtail here or you have to remove the Guardi EX from play. One of the two. But now, like, having our Curly in the active with the reversal doesn't really sound very good. Um, well, we could just go for... But if you Screamtail the Shiny Arcana off the bench, that doesn't feel that good either. Dude, losing the first prize card in the mirror match sucks. Is he playing three Arcana? Oh, he is. There is three Arcana. Okay, that makes a little bit more... Well, I don't know if that's still... Well, I guess maybe that does make sense then, to be honest, to play it like that. Because you do need to establish some cards, some Pokemon through candy at some point, so you may as well just do it right now and hope you get the super odd combo. So I like it a little bit. I hate it. I dislike it a little bit less now, knowing that they have the triple Arcana, because it's way easier to get another Arcana into the active here. But I don't know if that's going to make a difference here either. There's an Ultra Ball, so we do have the Arcana. Get rid of the research probably here. Draw two. Want to just draw into the Arcana. You don't want to play. 
Yikes. Ultra Ball for Arcana to KO the active. Well, hold on. We could Ultra Ball for Arcana. And they drew their Collapse. The Collapse is the way to get rid of your own EX off the bench. Dude, we still have not seen their Scream Tail. We still have not seen the Scream Tail. What are we attacking with here? Preserving the reversal, attacking with... Oh, Shiny Arcana into the Cresselia again is such a... It's such a bad... It's like you don't want... This, on, this is what, not what you want to do. It's so bad for the... the Guardi player on the right. To Shiny Arcana KO in a Cresselia feels terrible. It feels so bad. All right, here comes another Super Rod. They are recovering the Zacian here. I talked about the Zacian earlier. I didn't love the Zacian discard, but... Just Zacian, one Ralts. Artisan for the Ralts. It, this is looking pretty tough, though. For the Guardi player on the left here, all you have to do is boss KO Guardi X this turn and you just win the game. Shiny Arcana matching to a Cresselia again. Feels bad. Because even if the boss play doesn't happen, that still feels bad. But yeah, let's see if... Uh, we'll see if they have the KO on the Guardi X here. If they have KO on Guardi X here, the game is basically just over. Bro, he's not he's not playing Screamtail? Bro, you guys told me he was playing Screamtail. So it's literally just Guardi Guardi. That's what I was saying. So they have to play like triple reversal then, right? Um, that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. That's cool. So you basically are mirage stopping. If you don't, if you, dude, if you don't play Cresselia or Screamtail and you, and you can't mirage step, do you just lose? Probably, right? I assume they play triple reversal, triple, uh, triple reversal, triple, um, what's it called? It's super odd. Maybe even there's an Avery. Oh, but Avery means no boss. Okay. It's winnable again. Avery means no boss. But what is the play here for sure? Do they play Zacian? They can't Zacian this turn. Moonlight Hill exists. They don't need triple reversal. Oh, that's true. I guess you don't need as you don't need the triple reversal with the Moonlight Hill. Well, you might want to still play triple reversal for more aggressive plays with Shiny Arcanas, right? Okay, Scream Tail's happening. Once again, another non-draw support. Pokemon, you being used as an attacker. There's the knockout. Down to two prize cards. It needs the gust next turn. But Iono can hit here. So we can see Iono. Also, they didn't overload the bench Shiny Arcana. Um, oh, only one minute left as well. I just realized, yeah, I just realized that. There should be enough time for this game to conclude though, right? Because the, the active players, there's player two. So they'll play their turn. Well, they have to finish in a minute here. They gotta finish. They gotta cook. They gotta cook. Super Rod, recover Shiny Arcana. And a Ralts. Double Ralts? We need that many Ralts? <laughs> Dude, he really wants to get his hands on that discard pile. He's rubbing them together. So let me see what you got in there. Triple Ralts? Why do we need the squad? Why do we need so many Ralts? Artisan for Ralts? Do we need that many rolls? Oh, we're trying to collapse. We're trying to collapse the way the Guardi EX here. Okay, okay. That's why. That's why. That's why. I was like, why are we trying to get so many rolls out here? But that makes sense. That makes sense. I think it's just Shiny Arcana. There's a Ralts. Another Ralts. All three Ralts getting used. That's why we need triple rolls. Reversal. I own. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, sure. Collapsed. Oh, but he discards his own Guardi EX. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but time was called. That's why he's annoyed. But it doesn't matter. You lose here, right? Because <laughs> he didn't get the counter catcher. Because they both collapse away each of their guardies, and then the player on the left still just wins. Dude, more Tina, bro. Tina actually might be the most popular deck. The top three are definitely Tina, Guardi, Zard, or something like that. And then Maridon's actually up there as well, to be honest. So what deck would you recommend to a new player to try and get into the... Uh, probably Maridon or Zard. One of those two. You guys with the Thornton Moon thing yet with hands? Nope. Tina again. That's what I'm saying. Tina's... Tina might be the most popular deck. Zero Aura, Iron Valiant? Is that what it is? They're kind of cooking. That rope new? No, it's an old rope. We just never got it. Um, no one got it outside of Japan, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Arceus, Zero Aura? But of course. Oh, wait, hold. yeah, I got you on the prediction. My bad. All right, go ahead. Get your... Get your... Get your fix in. They really liking the Ditto over there too in the Tina as well. Arceus, what? Arceus Energy, Insta Dub, true. The game's basically over. 
They're 10 and 2 with Arceus Zera Aura? Bruh, no shot. Tina Cook's any arc deck? I don't know. What does the Zera Aura do? Can the Zera Aura, like, do anything against uh, the Tina? Also, is it the VMAX or the V Star, right? I guess we don't know. It's one or the other. Hey, I'm going to look up what they both do. <laughs> I don't know what either of those cards do off the top of my head. Zera Aura V Star. Let's take a look here. We've got the Crushing Bolt. You made this card a stadium play for 190. Okay, this cannot be the one they're playing. But the V-Star attack does 60 to 4 Pokemon. So I guess if they avoid using Arceus's... If they avoid using Arceus's V-Star Star Birth, then I guess they could use that. <clears throat> the other one is... Uh, 60 damage for two Lightnings for each of your opponent's Pokemon to play that has an ability. That's pretty good. That could be okay. And then Max Fist, 240. Discard two energy for this Pokemon. That does not seem like the play, though, to be honest. Do we even have that Zero Aura in the West? Yeah, we have it. It's just not very good. <laughs> but I'm curious to see what they can cook up with it in this match. I'm definitely interested to see what they got going with it. They could have some They got some interesting, uh, interesting stuff. That's not a lot of basics. Let's see what they actually do here. Peony or Professor Research? I think the P. Uh, right now, currently I'm on the Peony train. I think Peony is better, but. April. Okay, they are getting. They can punch with Cram here at the very least. Oh, well, punching with Cram here is like not that relevant though, unless they play. Punching with Cram is relevant if the Arceus deck plays. Um. If the Arceus deck plays V Guard Energy, then the Cram punch is actually kind of relevant, but. There's a Sable, another Comfy. Got the Jet, so we can Jet up, do another Comfy. Wait, what? Wait, what? Don't we have a Jet? Is there not a Jet? I appreciate the 31 months there. Call me, Luna. I thought we had a Jet. Are we, why are we not Jetting up and Comfying again? Is there a reason? Did we already retreat? No, we already we just attached. We couldn't have retreated. They do have the V-Guard. The Cram Punch would have been nice. Also, getting down a Tina would have been nice. Maybe they didn't take the jet. Maybe they didn't take the jet. Maybe they don't have a jet. Maybe I'm trolling. I thought they took a jet and lost onto water, though. Then we could have jetted up the bench comfy, used comfy, got ourselves a Tina, retreat to Cram, punch with Cram. They did take the jet? That's what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure they took the jet. Punch it with, and punch it with Cram's relevant because they play the V-Guard. So that means that lost impact doesn't KO it. Oh, they also play Flying Pikachu, but of course. But I think Arc Flying P has got a little bit past its uh, a little bit past its prime here. I don't know about Arc Flying P. <laughs> I don't know if that's it. So it's the Arc 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 Lightning Box here with the Flying P. You know what round we're on? Uh, we are on round twelve, actually. Oh no, thirteen. We're on round thirteen. So I think there's one more round. Um, there's one more round. But we usually see two matches each round, so. They're trying to do something must be working. I mean, being 10 and 2 doesn't exactly make a deck good, to be honest. They play the Ditto as well? Bro, this deck is cracked. Yeah, being 10 and 2 doesn't exactly make a deck good. Uh, being 10 and 2 means you're 10 and 2. Because of the variables in Pokemon, like pretty subpar decks can go pretty far sometimes, to be honest. As long as like the pilot, like the biggest thing comes down to the pilot. If the pilot plays well, like that's like the biggest factor. Um, also like the lack of knowledge that I'm sure everyone has going up against Arceus Lightning Box is pretty high, which probably gives the Arceus Lightning Box player a big advantage. But there's also like that factor as well. The, the, uh, the unknown factor. Okay, Colbert's off the top. You love to see that. Derek, they looked excited. <laughs> they looked excited about that one. Okay, they can finally find a Tina. Starbirth hasn't been used yet, so maybe you hit him with the path. Or I'm pretty sure Starbirth hasn't been, hasn't been used yet. I can't see their V-Star marker. Isn't this also best of one? It is also best of one, which does increase variance. For sure. That is all. That is, that is another factor as well. It is also best of one. Okay, another Comfy. Surprise Factor is way stronger in Best of One. That's true as well, yeah. And in Best of One, Surprise Factor is way stronger. 
Lightning Storm about to go crazy? Bro, it could. Wait, we haven't seen if it's a VMAX or a V-Star yet, right? We haven't seen the VMAX or the V-Star. We just know it's there or a V. What if it's just the V? Hold up. Let me cook. Wait, what is Flying Pikachu even good against right now? Oh, I guess like Maridon, right? They showed the V-Star on screen? Oh, so it probably is the V-Star then. Because the V is no good, right? 190, can't attack next turn. That's pretty bad. Is there one with free retreat cost though? No. Okay. Should the V-Star graphic? All right, so I assume it's the V-Star. All right, we finally got a Tina here. I said, Starbirth hasn't been used, so you might want to throw a path in play. There it is. You also would like to punch with Cram this turn though as well. Um, you should also try and punch with Cram this turn because you want to get through the V-Guard energy. Now, theoretically, well, we know if it is just Zero Aura V-Stars, then you can go. <clears throat> and they maybe should have Starbirth last turn to play around the path, to be honest. Uh, you could go Star Requiem, the the Arceus, and then Lost Impact does KO Zero Aura V-Star. But I don't think the Tina player knows for sure what the heck is going on or what they should play around. So getting a Cram Attack off there to have the option to Lost Impact the Arceus to save Star Requiem is probably something you want to aim for. So probably something you want to aim for. But it's not like a terrible spot here for sure. the opponent needs to read that zero what zero does but i mean everyone would have to bro and that's something you should do if you're not 100 sure what your opponent's card does pick it up <laughs> and read the card dude i have won way too many games because my opponent oh they got the four energy on there though i have won way too many games because my opponent didn't just pick up my my goddamn card and read it they were just like you know what i see that card there i don't know what it does i'm just gonna keep playing my turn pick up the card read the card <clears throat> yeah read the flavor text too because you never know we're gonna need that as well Reading the card explains the card? Exactly. <laughs> Reading the card explains the card. You yeah, appreciate the prime sub there. Just call me Dan. Welcome to the Rat Pack, Dan. We're all the carrots. We got plenty of turkey. Reading? Couldn't see it. It's actually crazy. It's like way too high of a, of a account. Can you use Zero Aura V-Star even with Path in play? Yes. The v Zero Aura's V-Star power is an attack, not a not an ability. So the Path shuts down Star Birth, specifically. But not the Zero Aura. But they don't have the Zero Aura yet, so... Alright, we got the Star Requiem for the KO. But like I said, you definitely wanted to aim for a... Um, you definitely wanted to aim for a... A cram hit into the... What's it called? But it's probably going to work out here where they'll only need Lost Impact for the rest of the game. But honestly, I don't know. They... they they could play more than one V Guard energy. Oh wait, they only hit for they only did the hit. Oh okay, they didn't go for the Star Wreck. Interesting. So I do like that choice to be honest, probably because you don't know what you're up against. So I do kind of like that choice from the Lost Tina player because it's like, should I use my Star Requiem here? I don't know what these Aurors are about to evolve into and do. Probably, um, Forest Seal, dude. I don't know if I can get behind the Force Seal Stone, though. <laughs> we got plenty of other... We got plenty of other V-Star powers in this deck. I don't know if I can get behind the Force Seal Stone here. That's like a lot of V-Star options. Also, attaching it's a little bit weird as well. I don't like the attaching it there. Some Tinas play Vacuum, not very many. But your hand is dead as the Arceus player. So it's like not like you're gonna, your hand's going to get... In this situation, like I don't like playing around Vacuum against Tina. Unless we know our hand is probably not going to get disrupted. Which in this situation, the... The Artina player is never disrupting our hand. Even if they have a... They can't Roxanne us, first of all. And even if they had Iono, they don't want to Iono us. Because they we've been sitting, literally sitting here draw attacking for like three turns. Um, and then there it is. That's what I was saying. Now, now our Zero Aura gets boss KO'd. Oh, now we're going to commit this Star Requiem? We could have had the Lost Impact there. I don't know if I like that, actually. I think I would like to have seen the Lost Impact for the KO. Um, but yeah, now we just lose our four Seal Stone, right? Yeah, you don't want to do that. You appreciate the uh, three months there, Adam. Let's get at least three more months of the game growing. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. I really just like their damage counters, but their sleeves are sick. The damage counters are kind of kind of mid. They're just so tedious, but it is it is nice if because if you know the numbers, you know how much damage is on the Pokemon. Because the hunt the the red ones are a hundred, the orange ones are fifty, the yellow ones are ten. So it's very easy to like tell how much damage is on the Pokemon, which is nice. Maybe Sealstone was was a bait. 
I guess... I don't know. As someone who doesn't believe in baiting in the Pokemon TCG, like, all it would mean is that the Tina player misplayed. I, I think KOing the four Seal Stone is probably pretty good, to be honest, but you should probably KO with Loss Impact. <clears throat> um, as someone who is a bait denier, um, I'll say I guess, but I still feel like it's incorrect to, like... I, in this situation, it's tough because the Lost Tina player has no idea what the Zeroras probably do. Uh, the Zer the Tina player has no idea what the Zeroras do. So it's like, in this situation, it's like, oh, I put the four Seal Stone in play. I, I don't care if they KO my four Seal Stone because I'm trying to use my Zeroras attack V Star V Star attack anyways. So I don't care if you go KO my four Seal Stone because then I have the Zeroora to win the game. So in this situation, it's interesting, I guess. Uh, if you play a card to make two decisions much closer to equally good, I'd call that a bait. Yeah, but still only one is correct. I know what you're going to say after that, Jake, is that it's really it's impossible to calculate which one is actually correct in the moment. So it could prompt your opponent. But if they're like equal, then you didn't create like a... Oh, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm going down the road now. Now I'm believing in baiting. <clears throat> Roxanne here. Yeah, that's the goal here. Play Roxanne. Play Roxanne, save like KO the bench Arceus, set up some more damage on the other Arceus, get the Tina in play, we see the Nest Ball coming out now. Uh, but but actually, the V-Star power is still around here for the Arceus player. The Arceus player just needs uh, Zero Aura V-Star, and they actually win. Because Zero, Zero Aura V-Star's V-Star attack says you get to put 60 damage on your opponent's Pokemon four times. So you would just KO Sableye and Comfy to win the game. So we're about to see Arceus Lightning Box defeat Tina if the Arceus player can find Zero Aura V-Star next turn. That's what they need here. No, the Countercatcher. Wait, that's fine. They can't kill it. They're just Countercatchering to burn the Countercatcher, I guess? Honestly, that's kind of fine. You don't really want to draw back into Countercatcher if you have the Roxanne here. All right, let's see if they got the Roxanne. I'm pretty sure there's an Ultra Ball in the hand here for the Zero Aura player. So it comes down to the Roxanne. Do they have the Roxanne? Zero Aura for the win. They might have it here. It might be happening. They're attacking with Sableye. Dude, they did it. That's... <laughs> well, I guess it's not that cool, to be honest, because they can just use the, the attack to put four hits on a Tina, which is a little bit less exciting, but I guess it's still kind of cool. Dude, that's wild. <laughs> this is not what I expected to happen. I think the Tina player played way too conservatively. They, like, lost impacted. The Tina player played way too conservatively. They lost impacted. Um, There it is. Yeah, the V-Star attack does 60 damage four times. That's crazy. 11 and 2 Arceus Lightning Box, bro. 2 and 2. That's it. Dude. <laughs> yeah, the Tina player played way too conservatively. They, like, lost impacted when they should have started Requiemed. I think they had 10 there. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure they were up to 10. Start or Guardi. Probably. I don't think there's anything else that plays to me. Roaring Moon, I guess, sometimes plays a Mysterious Tale. Prediction, though? All right, I got you, I got you, I got you. You guys caught it in time. All right, go, go, go. Get your predictions in. Put the Bulu Bucks on the line. <clears throat> Iron Valley and Samurott. Yo, that'd be pretty sick. I've been seeing, I saw a couple, I've seen a couple lists for that, though. People would be cooking out here, for sure. Went back in time again. Last match was 11-2. These guys are 10-2. Oh, that is true. We are in round 11 with them. I didn't even realize that. So maybe we'll get one more. Maybe they'll show one more win in a match, to be honest. Like there's a side station match that was happening. Manders. They have an Ultra Ball in hand, it looks like. Getting rid of a Super Art and a Manaphy. Is it B-Barrel or is it Pidgey? I see a Radiant Charizard, I think. They're lining up Rotom. There is Pidgey. So it is Pidgeot Charizard. I think the judge asked him to, like, l clean up his discard pile there. Eyeing up the Rotom. No Pidgey downturn one yet, though. That's not good. Is Guardi the only deck that's better because of best of one instead of best of three? It might be, to be honest, Victor. I think so. Yeah. It might be. I don't think I can't think of any other deck. 
Well, so I guess the, old, the flip side of that is Snorlax is worse than best of one and better than best of out of three, I guess. But, like, I think that's it, though. <clears throat> 250k Bulu's on Zard. Uh-oh. You might be disappointed, Peter. That's a 60 HP Charmander on the bench. It's finna get Yoga Looped, bro. I'm ready for it to get Yoga Looped, to be honest. <clears throat> How's Peony Maradon doing so well? It seems to break too often for me. I mean, the deck's pretty good. I don't think the deck's any less consistent than normal, uh, Peony. I don't know about that. That hand did not look great. But, I mean, that those that Colrus did not look great. There was no Battle VIP best in the Colrus, but maybe Kyogre's better in best of one. Yeah, I could see that as well. Kyogre might be better in best of one as well, yeah. Nah, Terminal Colrus, we not. True, Terminal Colrus is not that good. Not for an Iron Valiant deck. I didn't see what the Lost Zones were. <clears throat> Oh, it's Town Store. It's Ursh, right? That means it's Urshifu. It's not uh, Ente. So, uh, honestly, this matchup is probably terrible for Charizard because you can, like, build up pings. Oh, they ultra bought away Manaphy and Super Rod off the rip as well. Oh, no. Because you, you can go GMAX Rapid Flow into TM Devo. It's f that's free. Dude, they ultra bought away Manaphy and Super Rod. They might play double Super Rod, so they can maybe get the Manaphy back. But you need to stop, like, the early G-Max Rapid Flow. Um, yeah, they can build up damage. They can G-Max Rapid Flow. Basically set everything up to die, and then just, like, TM Devo and, like, board wipe all the evolutions. It's, like, pretty easy in this matchup, I have to imagine. Like, with, easy in this matchup with the lack of Manaphy. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, shot I bet money on Zard. Assuming, I mean, I assume the Valiant was Entei as well, but... That was my assumption, too. I was like, oh, this has to be Entei, right? That's all right. It's still winnable. Maybe. The Strafe. It's a slow start for the Urshifu, though. No Billy turn one. We'll see. Oh, yeah. You get the Strafe plus the ping, bro. That's so cheesy. You like Radiant Charizard in the Zard deck. Nope. Yeah, y'all are getting... Y'all about to lose all your Bulu bucks. Okay, you have turn two Zard... Oh, they're, are they giving up on the Charmander? Is that even correct to give up on Charmander like that? I don't even know. I don't, I don't know. That seems weird. It might be correct. We'll see. We couldn't keep Town Store for Steel Stone for VIP. I mean, it depends what the what was off the Colrus, though. Like, you'd rather save for Steel Stone for later if you're content with your hand, so... <clears throat> You'd rather keep it around. You'll push it 24 months there, Superman. There's the retreat. Just a pu I mean, if you have, if they have boss punch urge, that's pretty chill. Oh, there's the super on. I don't know if you want Manaphy this turn. Well, they're about a G Max rapid flow, but to be honest, your board is so underdeveloped. I guess the to be honest, the uh the Manaphy this turn probably doesn't matter. If they use that super on, I assume they have research or they really want the Manaphy. Gonna go for the Manaphy here. I mean, G-Max Rapid Flow, punch the active Charizard, plus punch Rotom would be a lot of... That would be a lot to deal with, to be honest. That would be a lot to deal with. It's gonna get tough. They're probably just gonna go with... Honestly, they could just strafe this turn. And just, like, go switch to Iron Valiant, strafe to a new Iron Valiant. Because without Pidgeot in play, the Charizard player doesn't get to pick what they do every turn. So... You could just like chill and build up damage and then look for a yoga loop turn on the Manaphy uh, plus a G-Max Rapid Flow to like win the game or like a TM Devo play. Um, it's not looking, it is not looking good for Charizard. That's for sure. Gale Thrust would also be pretty chill here. I think they just Ultra Ball away their whole... Oh my... Dude, they're bench locked. And they are... They're Iono in here? I feel like they should have just chilled and punched. Dude, every... This feel... Oh, they had boss too. They could have actually boss punch Ursh. They had boss punch Ursh hold hand. Dude, their bench is set up to get Raffle Stomped. Okay, sure, the Iono is wrong here. Boss Punch Ursh seems like the only reasonable play. Um, yeah, Boss Punch Ursh seems like the only reasonable play here. And they had it. <laughs> this play, you're just bench locked out of everything. It's going to be so easy to deal with two Charizards. Unless they, like, dead draw off the Iono. Um, they could... I, the only thing I can think of is if they de literally dead draw off the Iono. That's the only thing I can see. They do have the Charmeleon, though, so they can't be devoed. But they could just, uh, they could just G Max Rapid Float, I guess. There's a switch cart. 
It's also in the Prime Catcher Ace Pack that got revealed. It's a good card. Going after the Charmeleon. But it could just be a strafe strat here. They could just like... Okay, 20 more. Wait. Sh sure, yeah, they can still retreat, right? Yes, they can retreat into Ursh, Ursh into a new Valiant. Okay. Can't have counters placed on it, if I recall correctly. No, you can place counters on it. It just prevents effects of attacks. The uh, Charmeleon prevents effects of attacks. So it stops TMD evolution and it stops Sableye. Which is... But the, both of those things are pretty good. Ooh, two switch cards off the Ultra Ball? What are they going to go for here as well? They could go for the Gale Thrust. Or they could... I think they might just go with the Strafe into the Fresh Valley. But two switch cards biting the dust there? Yeah, and Yoga Loop. And Yoga Loop, yeah. What was their hand that they got rid of two? That's rough. Okay, 20 more ping. They are set up to... Uh, they can't. They could TM Devo. They could TM Devo plus KO Charmian. They can. They can wipe the Zarge off the off the field this turn. They can also just chill for another turn and probably be fine as well, though, and build up some more damage. They could even like KO the Charmian this turn, to be honest. They could look KO Charmian plus Gale Thrust the Act. I don't know. They have so many plays. The only thing that I can think of that would like maybe allow the Charizard player to win is if they whiff. If the if the Urshifu player just can't find TM Devo, because the Zards are here now. The Zards are here now. We're swinging. We're two-hit KOing everything on the board. Pushing the Urshifu would have been so much better, though, on that previous turn. There's a punch. Yeah, the Urshifu player doesn't have infinite time, but they have a lot of time. You'll appreciate the, <laughs> appreciate the tier 1 sub there, P-Roy. Welcome to the pack. All right, here we go. 20 more. We're all at a shrimp, but we got plenty of... What is Iron Valiant's ability? The Worker... Second Ursh, looking good. Available for coaching before Liverpool. Uh, you can check my check my schedule on Medify. I check my schedule on Medify. Um, tachyon bits, plenty of tachyon bits. Well, no, they already used that one, right? Wait, am I trolling? Didn't they just use that one? They can't use both like that, right? They just got away with this using tachyon bits with the exact same. Iron Valiant, right? Someone tell me I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay, I think the judges might be checking it now, thankfully. You're all right? Okay, I thought so. <laughs> yeah. As well, I'd say that you always try to make the most statistically optimal play to win in Pokemon. So do you have a stats reason for calling for a judge shuffle? Um, The only stats reason I have is because I know, like, I don't want to have to emotionally deal with the possibility of having cut or shuffled Grant into the Tina V-Star. So just remove if I just remove myself from the choice... I feel no emotional connection to the outcome of the situation. But if I like cut and then Grant draws into the Tina, or if I shuffle and then Grant draws into the Tina, or if I tap and then Grant draws into the Tina, well, it's like, well, what if I had cut or what if I had shuffled or what if I had tapped? Um, but if I just let the judge pick, then if Grant gets the Tina V-Star, I'm just like, okay, it's whatever. Yeah, so there should be 20 less damage in play. I think they're resolving it now, though. They could have gotten off two Iron Valiants there, though, right? I think they messed up their sequencing. Um, yeah, I just don't want to influence it. I just don't want to be like, like have any, like, uh, it's a placebo. Judge Shuffle is simply another of your choices. Yeah, but I feel less emotionally attached to it. So, like, that's the thing. I just feel less emotionally attached to it. The Azul... Uh, Judge Cut is his biggest L take. Like, I'm not saying it's logical, but it, but knowing until I get to the point where I feel like I'm mentally strong enough to overcome it, I'm not going to put myself in the situation for it to be a factor in uh, my mental state. So until I feel like I'm mentally, I, it doesn't, it wouldn't mentally weigh on me to not have cut or, or to have cut myself, then at, until that point, then I'm going to remove myself from that potential uh, situation. 
But the hope is that I get to the point where I don't need that, uh, what's it called? Uh, crutch. Yeah. The TM Diva would win the game this, or not win the game, it would, it would remove both Charizards from the board. Well, now they should build up damage on the Manaphy. Oh, they put on the active? Why wouldn't he put on the Manaphy there? Okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, they didn't put the damage yet. Okay, we're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. Also, I guess, like, from a viewer's experience, I kind of like the, uh, from a viewing experience, like, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but, like, taking the players out of it a little bit does, like, you know, kind of, like, leaves it open for, like, no potential of, like, uh, no potential of, like, uh, player, um, player interaction. So, like, it really is just, like, it is just, like, whatever it is, it is, right? And, like, no one's going to be, like, Player A did this or player B did that and so on. So it just like removes the players from it and like whatever gets strong gets drawn. Come back to the game for real. Bro, Peter Ben playing, bro. I just literally saw Peter at San Antonio. <laughs> it's also like a cool car and calling card IMO. The judge shuffle guy. <laughs> the judge shuffle guy. I don't know if I want that uh, as my calling card. Okay, now the TM Devo's coming out. Now it's... All right, before, it was looking a little bit scary, to be honest, because they hadn't found it yet. I got the TM Devo. Can they move that active Iron Valiant, though? I, I assume they can move it. Now it's... it's. I assume it can move. Are they just going to pass? It actually is getting kind of close. If they pass here, even if you get to, if you, even if you remove, you don't just win if you remove both Charizards from plays. You've only drawn two prize cards. I mean, see, they're playing like they don't have a way to get the Urshifu in the active. Okay, maybe not. Chirping champ. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, they have a way to get into it. Dude, I don't know. They were playing Rick really slow there. I was like, do they have it? TM Devo should hit. There we go. Two prize cards. But it's the game's not over yet. They've only drawn two prize cards. They don't have a quite have a way to Yoga Loop the Manaphy yet. They don't have a way to Yoga Loop the Manaphy yet to then use G-Max Rapid Flow. So it is still possible for the Zard player to win here. They do need to reestablish a Zard or Radiant Charizard. But Radiant Charizard can't attack for a little bit. They really need to get a Charmander down. And on the next turn, hopefully. Two Rods gone, though. Two Rods are gone, but they still have Charmander. They still have two Charmander left. There's one. They are down four energy left. It's uh, four energy as well. Um, but they should be able to put it together. Also, an Iono here could be pretty brutal too. Collapsed. <sighs> Wait, did they just? Did they just put the four seal stone on the Rotom and then collapse away the Luminian when they could have put the four seal stone on the Luminian and then collapse away the Rotom? Bro, I gotta come up with like a term for that. But they're like, uh, they tunnel visioned, not tunnel visioned. They're playing. Uh, what is what is the word I want to say? Maybe he wants a Rotom this turn. Oh, true. You do want to draw with Rotom. Is that worth it, though, to leave a Rotom in play with that much damage? All right. I felt like they tunnel vision, but that is fair. That is fair. They do want to draw cards with Rotom. That is fair. Rotom has 20 more HP, but also has 60 damage on it. So it has less HP. But that is fair. We do want to draw with Rotom. Okay, okay. That's my bad. That's my bad. Hyper-focused. There's still a term that... I, like, when you just, like, play things how you normally would... Like, you usually attach four seal stone to Rotom. Habit, like playing ha like a play of habit. But in this situation, they actually just want to use Rotom to draw cards. So yeah, I overthought that one. Autopilot, autopilot. I would say habit. Habit is the the word I'm looking for. Like playing, uh, playing in habit or whatever you want to call it. But no, muscle memory. Yeah, kind of like that. But in this situation, they just want to draw cards with Rotom, which makes sense. I'm the one who like overthought that there for for a second. I was like, well, what are we doing, leaving this thing in play with damage? But drawing three cards at the end of the Iano is pretty sick. Playing habitually, yeah. That works. So ideally here, you would Yoga Loop, the Manaphy, and then G-Max Rapid Flow, KO Charmander, KO Rotom, and win the game. But they're not playing like they have that good of a place here. But they still have time. They still have time. There's no Pidgeot in play. There's no Charizard in play. There's a switch. All right. We're ping up the Manaphy a little bit more. They might have some more. Is it a pass? Nope, we got that. You can ping 20 more on the Manaphy, get it in Yoga Loop range. Zard also honored all their Zards to the bottom. 
Yeah, we gotta find him again. Well, they did just shuffle the deck with uh, the Mysterious Tail before they used Rotom, so they have a chance to draw back into them. Is there supposed to be more damage on it? 110? They got four Seal Stone, and there's the pass. That seems fine, though. They still basically win with G-Max Rapid Flow next turn. There's still four prize cards left for the Charizard player, so they should be fine. I own was like the only thing I can think about that would be really devastating. Bro, all the Charizards play the TMD Evolution. They had TMD Evolution there. Is that maybe just like the... Is that the tech card right now? TMD Devo? It's good against Guardi. Good against Guardi. Good against Mirror. Honestly, that could be the tech. There's the Iono. Okay. But no Zard yet. They need to draw Candy Zard. Did they already use Mew? Using the Mew before the Iono is interesting. I don't like that. Unless they had like a Zard in hand and wanted to find the Candy off the Mew first. I guess that's reasonable. It's just the Rody for three. Wait, they haven't used their V-Star power yet. Oh, they ripped a sleeve. I was wondering why we were stopping. They ripped a sleeve. Wait, could they really have not put Charizard together? TM Diva for the mirror match? Is that better than Justify Close? I mean, maybe. I don't know. Seems like it would be pretty good to be honest. It would be good for sure. It's probably as good as Justified Gloves. You can make some crazy plays in the mirror. Because you could like go punch a Zard, counter catcher, punch a Pidgeot, punch another Zard, Iono, TM Devo, and then clean up from there or something. Did they hit four Seal Stone? Did they, could they really not put together a Charizard there? Because I think you definitely would want to attack here if you could. You definitely want to put the pressure on as the Charizard player here. Could also help you versus Urshi Intel. Yeah, honestly, yeah, it'd be good against Urshi Intel as well. It'd give you, like, another route to take against him. That matchup's so tough, so I don't know if it does that much, but it would help, I guess, a little bit. Dude, I, I honestly think they forgot about Forest Sealstone. Maybe out of both hands, though, they didn't draw Candy Charizard. It's possible out of both hands they didn't see Candy Charizard. Did yeah, anyone draw nothing? No, there's... A, there's well, maybe that's what happened initially. All right, there's the Metacham. They win with Yoga Loop G-Max Rapid Flow here. Oh, actually, not quite. They are 10 damage off the Rotom. So they win with Yoga Loop. Yoga Loop plus a ping. They win with Yoga Loop plus a ping plus a G-Max Rapid Flow. Another four Seal Stone. Yoga Loop. Ping G-Max Rapid Flow. So they just need a Switch card and a Rapid Strike Energy. And there's the Research. Pretty close. Pretty unlikely for them to whiff. There's the escape rope. So the four seal stone should be able to find the rapid strike energy, which means they should win on the next turn. And having a charge on the last turn wouldn't have prevented this. But I do. I find it hard to believe that there wasn't a. I find it hard to believe that they didn't have an out to candy Charizard from the previous hand before Iono, and then Iono and not having it. Did they not seal stone already? I don't think so. They attached it on the turn prior, the turn before their last turn, and their their V Star markers just face up. So I assume they have not. I assume they have not used their four seal stone. There's the loop. Here comes the G Max Rapid Flow, and they're just pushing up the road for him to take. Escape rope again. Sure, whatever. It doesn't matter. Do they even need this extra ping? No, they don't even need this extra ping. Bro, the Charizard player is literally trying to give them the game, and then they're like BMing by playing the escape rope and stuff. I'm sure he's not actually BM. He's just trying to make sure he doesn't miss a step. But it is kind of funny. It is a little funny. It is a little funny. But yeah, dub for the for the the Urge Valiant. This is definitely a terrible matchup for Charizard. Honestly, anything that can abuse TM Devo as efficiently as this deck is a bad matchup. But Ente Ente with the TM Devo is not that terrible of a matchup. That one's like fine, I think. Dude, Guardi against Zard again, bro. This is like this is like set up for Mew to just win. I, I think Mew's just gonna win this tournament. I honestly think Mew's just gonna get the dub. We'll see. Can the Charizard play? Might give me maximum luck at tournaments to win. It's got to help a little bit at least. Oh, did I even do the prediction? I didn't do the prediction, did I? Start prediction. Who wins this game? Start prediction. Got it. All right, predictions up, chat. Go, go, go. We got Guardi against Zard. Wait, is that the second battle VIP pass? That's the first one, right? No, we're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. Generally, I do give Guardi the edge, but we don't know what's in the Zard build, so it might be it might be a little better. Would you say Guardi is favored into this matchup? Yeah, overall, I give Guardi the edge. 
depends when they are playing heavily for the mirage step there it, it does heavily depend on what the zard player plays um oh my bad i didn't realize uh yeah it does depend heavily on what the zard player plays but it is i i do favor guardy overall i think um but there's like you can play some stuff to make the matchup a lot closer Close matchup? Mm, I, I think it's solidly Guardy favored. I wouldn't call it a close one. I'll say it's solid for Guardy. But, like, it's not... Un it just really depends on... Um, do they have the Avery? Do they have Vengeful Punch? The, how many Lost Cities do they play? Like, those are all, like, factors for sure. Um, yeah, Definitely all factors. All that stuff is factors. Ultra Bowl, no second battle VIP, but that's fine. They got the Pidgey in the hand, and they got the Rody for the draw. They don't really need, like, that many more basics. They're holding the Artisan. I like that as well. Oh, they might play it. I would hold Artisan here, though. You're not really... Oh, they had Avery the whole time as well? Or Arvin? What is it? Avery? Arvin? Arvin, yeah. They always have the Vac. I don't think we've seen a Vacuum in a Guardi deck yet, actually, though. I don't think we've seen the, the Vac yet in the Guardi. Maybe we have. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. I think it's just that more stuff can go wrong for Guard War. Um, the Guard War can play this matchup pretty slow, though, to be honest. I don't know. They got the TM Devo, though. We'll see if the TM Devo actually makes a difference in this one. I saw the TM... The Jirachi? So shutting down the turn... Dude, I don't... See, this Jirachi play is so weird to me. Like, I'd rather just leave the bench space open initially. Because, like, the Jirachi is interesting because it's like... Well, one... They're more likely to play Screamtail than Cresselia... And two, uh, yeah, that one, they're, more, they're just going to get screamtailed. Like, why would you put this Jirachi down here? The Jirachi down here is just so bad, right? Like, you, if you're going to put one of them down, you put Manaphy down. Uh, if you're going to put one of them down, you put Manaphy down. But you should put neither of them, them down and probably just keep the bench space open. Like, yeah, I don't know. I guess they know the Guardian player is going to step. Yeah, but why does that validate Jirachi? That doesn't validate Jirachi at all. Even if they're going to step, it doesn't validate Jirachi, the Jirachi choice, right? It's, you still just shouldn't take Jirachi because you're still just going to get Screamtailed. Like, <laughs> there's no reason to have the Jirachi on your bench. I don't know. Because the Guardi player doesn't want to attack with Cresselia anyways. You want to, like, want to KO on the following turn, so. Yeah. I, just like a I just don't like that. The We've seen a lot of people make a lot of weird choices about Manaphy and Jirachi in this matchup this of this tournament, though. Oh, only one Curlia, though. Is there one prize? Got yeah, your board locked until they can tail something. Yeah, exactly. Like, what if you got Iono and really want to use, like, Luminion or something? You just can't now. Um, also, I don't like the not attaching the four Sealstone either, because the Vacuum... I don't know. Vac I don't Maybe maybe you want to play around Vacuum there. I guess I don't hate playing around Vacuum. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> it's always one prize? Not always. Sometimes we get the, th sometimes we get the squad. Um... Ultra Ball giving up the counter catcher. That's fine. You are the aggressor. I don't really like giving up the Pidgey, though, but your bench is locked, so maybe it just doesn't matter. Because you do kind of, if you get far enough ahead in this match, or you do want double Pidgeot in play, because sometimes your lose condition is, sometimes your lose condition is them getting rid of your Pidgeot. So here comes the Candy Charizard, though. We're swinging. Boss KO refinement would be pretty cool, I guess. Avery here would be pretty cool if they play it. Um, yeah, Avery would be cool here as well if they play it. There's the Zard. We're cooking. I don't know if they play the Avery, though. So we'll probably just see Punch active here. They haven't played a supporter, so they still could. Uh, boss a Curlia. I like Boss Curlia here. They have to force Sealstone for it, though. They are using it, so I assume this means Boss Curlia or Avery's on the way. It is the boss. We're going with the Boss Curlia here. I like it. I think I like it. Um, remove the draw power from play is pretty good. Maybe they knew this Guardian player plays only Crest no Scream. I doubt it. I'm going to go and just... Ooh, they get rid of the one without the Ralts. Yeah, I guess that's correct. You don't want to be able to recover the Ralts, right? Yeah. I have to stop and think about it for a second, though. Okay. Actually, I don't even know if I like that Curly Ascend up here, to be honest. You could have just chilled and sent up Greninja. But I guess you're just going to get bossed then anyways. Maybe you punch. Um... All right, sounds good, Roy. I will. <laughs> I will. Don't worry. If the Guardian player finds Rod Iono, I think step again this turn seems good. Yeah, honestly, step again there. I actually don't hate that, Jake. Depending on where the other... Even, it doesn't matter where the other Curly is. Yeah, step again actually is not bad there. I kind of like that. 
I do kind of like that. Step has one retreat and energy already. Oh, that's true. I guess you get to pick what you're going to set up then at that point. That's reasonable. Yeah, stepping again, honestly, it doesn't seem terrible there. The one thing you don't want to do here, though, is you don't want to, like, attack with Screamtail or something. Um, play this matchup as Guardi. Basically, if you put Guardi EX in play, you want to be taking a two prize knockout. If you put, like, if they went Guardi EX here to set up Screamtail and then Screamtail the Charmander, well, in that situation, it'd be a little bit awkward for the Charizard player because they don't have a follow up Charizard. But that Jirachi could have been another Charmander and then they'd, they'd be fine. But instead, they put down a Jirachi instead of a Charmander. So now they could be in a worse spot. There's that Cresselia, though. And there's the Screamtail, of course. Um, Glass of Lost Box, uh, the truth right now, no shot. I'd have to play that. I haven't played with the deck yet, so I don't know how good I, f I think the deck is. But it's definitely not. I wouldn't call it the truth right now. The deck is like okay, probably. Like it's probably like a fine deck. I don't think it's like the next, the next big thing. They didn't have one prize. They just drew into it. Well, they super odd that one back to the deck, didn't they? Reversal Countercatcher uh, Rotom would be an amazing would be amazing this turn. Yeah, that would be fine. Basically, if Guardi X comes into play. You want to be taking a two prize knockout. Yeah, if Guardian comes to play, you have to be taking a two prize knockout. Oh, there's a KO on the Pidgeot. That's fine. This is good. This is good. Guardian's making moves. And the Pidgeot's a big KO here because now you can play. You can play a little bit more uh, aggressively as the Guardian player and do stuff like attack with Screamtail and stuff. Because, like, the chance that they have the boss. The chance that they have the boss to. KO your Guardi X is way lower now. Because one, they're bench locked out of Luminion, and two, they don't have Pidgeot. So, you think Rotom KO without putting EX in play would be better there? I'm not sure. Wait, could they have. Uh, it doesn't matter because you don't care if they KO the EX there as a Zard player. If they boss KO your EX, then you just go back into the Guardi. But you get to keep around draw power. Honestly, I think putting the Guardi EX in play is probably correct because if you get Iono, you want the Guardi EX in play. So, I think the Guardi EX in play is probably correct there because of that. But now you could go Guardi EX, boss KO into Guardi EX. Well,. Until station win, I guess. Yeah, I'm fine with it. It's probably going to be a Screamtail angle this turn now. Which, um... Oh, wait, actually, do we just have the knockout? Holy smokes, folks. They're just going all in. They have the second reversal already. Jesus, bro, chill out. I got the second reversal. Wait, can you do that? Oh, they're using Greninja. I was like, they just attached it, didn't they? Reversal isn't online. Oh, wait, true. Reversal isn't online. All right, I take it back. No reversal. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Um, yeah, I guess we're screaming in the active then. Never mind. You probably want Zacian here. I want the Zacian here. I would take Zacian. Because the Charger player could have boss KO Shiny Arcana here. Wait, they got a boss KO Guardi EX here. You just have to overload energy this turn. Well, now you have the Thrall, so you could have Guardi EX off of that. You maybe overload the energy here, I guess. Actually, I don't know why you wouldn't overload the energy here. Honestly, locking up all that energy on the Screamtail does not sound great. They're fully loading the energy on the Screamtail. I feel like the rest of the energy should go to the Shiny Arcana here, though. Yeah, throw the rest. They should throw all of it. I guess they don't need all of it, right? They just they need at least that much, but they could go further. I think they should probably should go further. There we go. There's the punch on the Zard. Once again, the Zard player, no Pidgeot, full bench. They have very limited options, turn to term. Boss KO Guardi EX here. I don't hate it. I actually, I think Boss KO Guardi EX here is probably fine. You'll appreciate the 24 months there, Dougie Fresh. I just realized I forgot to resub with Prime a while ago, lol. I want my shot at that Zard mat. <laughs> appreciate the 24 months there, Dougie. I will be giving away the Zard mat tomorrow. Giving away the backpack today, Zard mat tomorrow. What is that Pokemon between Mew and Jirachi, lol? Oh, Charmeleon. It's the new Charmeleon. Isn't it Troll Guardi player not getting Zacian back? Troll, that's how you close out this matchup. Uh, you'll appreciate the 49 months there, BGM. Uh, that's pretty good to close out the matchup. Yeah, I don't I don't like the not getting... As I was saying, I like getting the Zacian back there, but... Are we in cut yet? No, not yet. Are both get, uh, The giveaways are worldwide. Unless for some reason it's like an absurd shipping cost to go... I don't know. If you live in like the middle of nowhere, nowhere.
All right, second Zard's loaded up and used good to go. There's yeah, I almost wonder if the Iono should have been saved for next. That's a pretty big hint. Well, yeah, I guess I don't hate the Iono this turn. If you can, I can Iono this turn and next turn, that's probably correct. This turn, next turn, turn after that. There goes the Scream Tail. Shiny Arcana gets the KO. But they do have another Shiny Arcana in the deck, so they could candy the Ralts into a Shiny Arcana. Oh, they also have win with boss K1 Rotom. But not having the Zacian here is so weird. Oh, that's a pretty good play, though. They can KO the other Charizard. So then there's the damage Charizard in play. This is pretty good. And now you can KO the Charizard with Guardiac. This basically just locks up the game, actually, to be honest. The only play I see for Charizard is if they play Radiant Charizard, they can attack with Radiant Charizard plus Iono. But they probably don't play the Radiant Charizard. We can see, though. We can see. TM oh, wait, TM Devo. Yo, wait, the TM Devo. Wait, is the Guardi EX candied? I forgot about the TM Devo. We could go Mew TM Devo. Hold up, hold up, hold up. How good is that? They'll be in Heat Tackle range? Oh, true. Heat Tackle works as well. The Guardi is not candied, though, is it? The, the Guardi came from EX isn't candied? Okay, it's not that good then. So, honestly, though, because the Guardi EX wasn't candied, Boss KO Guardi EX becomes like a more powerful play to like force a candied Guardi EX at the end of the game. To force out more candies, basically. Hey, there's the KO. So the TM Devo has to be the play here, but you have to like combo with Iona. But even if you combo with Iona, you're still not in that good of a spot, to be honest. Is that a V-Guard energy? Was that a V-Guard energy? What matchup is that for? Dude, Grant was obsessed with V-Guard energy. Oh no, Grant was obsessed with V-Guard energy in this deck for the other matchup though, for in the arc build. Okay, they got the Heat Tackle. They also have the TM Devo. Mew matchup? I guess. Stops lost impact on Pidge. Just auto Tina. Bro, Tina doesn't even want to go to their way to KO the Pidge, I feel like. How much damage is there on Zard? There's 160. Oh, the, oh, the only thing they have is the TM Devo play, actually. They have Super Rod, but are they even going to play it this turn? You probably want to top deck an Iono or something. So you probably don't even want to play Super Rod here. So they're thinking about it, though. They are going to use a super out here, but that decreases their top deck odds by a lot. Why would they want to top deck a fire energy? That doesn't seem correct. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I like the idea of gift in Pidgey's R, but I have not tested it yet. The gift is interesting as well. But the matchup that it matters most against is Lost Tina, and they have Path and Roxanne. Or, I mean, they have Star Requiem. That's what I meant to say. And Sableye. That's what I meant to say. Same thing. But this doesn't change anything. The game should still be over. Yeah, I don't think that really does anything. I mean, it's a cool play. But the Guardian player just still needs very little to win here. Also, there's no two-prizer in play. There's no two-prize Pokemon in play anymore. So, uh, because there's no two-prizer in play, the Guardian player can just pass with a one-prizer in the active. And then there's no way to win. But they can also win this turn. We'll see. I don't see... Okay. They played Fall Crystal. They could have super rotted Zacian and then got Zacian back in one right there, I think. I, is Zacian still in the... They literally had game, I think, there with Zacian. I don't know. They maybe needed one more energy, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah. I don't know. Did they forget about... No more super rod? Is, not, is there not a super rod in their hand? I swear I saw... Maybe I saw the Moonlight Hill. Dude, I swear that's a super rod in their hand. I might be trolling. That's a collapse. Okay, that's not a super rod. They just need boss? Yeah, yeah, I know they just need boss, but, but they haven't found boss. I thought they had a super rod in hand. I'm trolling, though, I think. Do they have boss? Dude, they had super rod the whole time! I was telling you, bro! Wait, how many energy did they How many psychics did they have, though? Now they're getting this Asian! If they have boss? Yeah, they, they if they have boss, they don't need Asian. They don't need to, they don't have the boss. They don't have boss. What do you mean? If they have super oddization, they win. Who cares about who cares about getting boss if you don't have boss when you have fall crystal super rod in your hand? You have game in hand. Who cares if you can get boss? Now, I don't know if they had nine energy though. They maybe didn't have nine energy. That's possible. 
He was inactive though. Station is doing lol. Oh shoot! What the fuck am I saying, bro? <laughs> I thought they had a Charizard in their active. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest. Never mind. You guys were right. There's the pass. See, what I also would like to have seen. I was confused, bro. I, apparently, I was the one who was confused. You good, bro? No, I'm not. Tunnel vision? Something like that. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Dude, I'm literally just tripping. I thought their active had a... I'm just getting tired. I thought I literally thought their active was worth two prize cards. It's a Mew, though. I thought you were saying you just pass and let... And they have to attack with Zard, and then you win with Zacian. Actually, you know what, Grant? Yes, that is what I was thinking. Yes. Yes. I would like to have seen them send up Greninja for that reason, though. I would like to have seen them send up Greninja for that reason. Send up Greninja, and then pass with Greninja in the active. Oh, wait, are they out of Psychics? There's a lot in there. Is Boss KO Greninja win the game? I don't think so. They got a fresh Zard, though. This is now a who draws boss first game? No, no, no. Because the Zard player has two prize cards. There's no two prizes on board. All right, there we go. Two energy. Dude, using the Super Odd lesson was pretty troll. But they did get out of it. They're out of Psychics. He kept Rod, though. Oh, if they kept the Rod, then they're safe no matter what. Yeah. There's the knockout. Well, now they don't even need boss. They need Zacian or boss, or they have, they're going to win here for sure. Yeah. I feel like they should have left Greninja in the active, though. They should have pushed Greninja and left it in the active on their last turn, though, I feel like. The chance that they whiff here is, like, not going to happen, though. There's no way. But they got Ultra Wild. Okay, that's game. They also have Zacian in hand. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I literally thought their active was worth two prize cards. I thought you guys were trolling, bro. I was the one who was trolling, though. I mean, you're talking for so many hours straight, you inevitably start to say nonsense. Happens to everyone. True, true, true. Can't put this one on me.